The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up. It was like eating me alive. A driller meets his match. Once it gets that, it's it's over. His own stomach. I was really scared to, you know, die in my in my own vomit. See the miracle that restored his life. That prayer was for me. Plus. A celebration 89 years in the making. Oh my goodness. We wish Pat a happy birthday on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome folks. I'm here with lovely Wendy. And Wendy, an amazing thing happened to me. I went to bed, a young guy. <laughs> I woke up older than Moses. It's just amazing what happens overnight. Well, you are so glad that you are here 89 years yeah, and uh, still going strong. Pat, we wish you a happy birthday well, today. Well, it's going to be a great time. So God bless you. Thank you. Well, this is my birthday. By the way, the president of Brazil, his birthday was March 21, minus 22. And we had kind of a little uh, <laughs> thing together about that. But March 22nd is called World Water Day. And we're going to tell you more about that coming up. We've got a a sample well, some of the things that we have been uh, showing. Wendy? And as we mentioned, today is Pat's 89th birthday. We are going to be celebrating this entire hour. This is an awesome occasion. We have some surprises, so stay tuned for that. But first in the news, you know, I was with uh, General Benny Gantz, who is a prominent Israeli, up on the Golan Heights, and we saw down what it was. And now uh, we realized the strategic importance of the Golan to Israel and at this point, there is no way under heaven that Israel will ever give it back. But President Trump is standing strong with Israel. He recognizes the Golan Heights as part of the Jewish state. The Golan is critical to Israel's security. It sits on the border with Syria, is strategic in protecting northern Israel. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu calls the president's move a miracle. And all this happens as Secretary of State Mike Pompeo visits Israel. CBN's David Brody is traveling with Pompeo on his Middle East, and they talked about President Trump's strong support for the nation of Israel. Okay. Walking firmly through the door, Mike Pompeo is a determined man. Both our Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and I had the opportunity to interview the Secretary of State. It was part politics, part policy, and part spiritual, especially for a strong Christian who experienced a refreshing in the Holy Land. The Western Wall, I was there with you. Uh, what was that experience like? I mean, how impactful was something like that? This was incredibly special uh, to be there, to be there with uh, uh, Israeli Prime Minister and the Ambassador from or the United States to Israel uh, was really an Im important moment. Uh, it was special for me as a Christian, uh, and it was special, I think, to show uh, the commitment the United States has to this uh, democracy, this Jewish nation of Israel. President Trump showed that strong commitment again by announcing, through Twitter of course, that it's time for the U.S. to fully recognize Israel's sovereignty over the disputed Golan Heights music to the ears of the Israeli Prime Minister. He did it again. First, he uh, recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moved the U.S. Embassy here. Then he pulled out of the disastrous Iran Treaty and reimposed sanctions. Netanyahu called it a Purim miracle as Jews around the world celebrate how God saved them through Esther from the evil Haman and the Persians. With modern-day Persians in Iraq threatening them now, and with President Trump boldly making moves in support of Israel, it begged for an obvious question. Could it be that, that President Trump right now has been sort of raised for such a time as this, just like Queen Esther, to help save the Jewish people from an Iranian menace? As a Christian, I, I certainly believe that's possible. Uh, it was remarkable. So we were down in the tunnels where we could see uh, 3,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago, if I have the history just right, uh, uh, to see the remarkable history of the faith in this place uh, and the work that our administration has done to make sure that uh, this democracy in the Middle East of this Jewish state remains, um, I'm confident that the Lord is at work here. But with all the benefits Israel has received from this administration, will there be a price to pay in the long-awaited Mideast peace plan?
What can you do to allay their fears of, of something like dividing Jerusalem and the upcoming peace plan? So I, I've seen uh, the details of the plan as it stands now. Um, there, I'm sure there'll be things moved just a bit as time goes on. Uh, but uh, uh, evangelicals of the world should know that we, this is a vision um, I th for what uh, might ultimately lead to this resolution of this conflict. And I think this plan presents a vision for that, but doesn't sacrifice any of these core principles, uh, frankly, of any of the faiths. As for the Jewish faith, attacks have been almost a way of life. Recently, anti-Semitism has seen a resurgence worldwide and even surfaced within the Democrat Party. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar has come under fire for some of her remarks. How concerned are you about the rise of not just anti-Semitism around the world, but in that Democrat Party as well? To see this uh, from a member of Congress like Congresswoman Omar to speak about anti-Semitism in that way is of great concern. It's great concern to me. Uh, this administration speaks the truth. Uh, and anti-Semitism is unacceptable in any form from anyone, but to see it come from one of America's leaders uh, is just abhorrent. Another concern, especially among many evangelicals, was President Trump's announcement to pull troops out of Syria, putting Christians and many others in the region as sitting ducks. Since then, the administration now says a military presence will remain, something the Secretary of State backed up in our conversation. Uh, the challenges in Syria remain. Uh, the United States intends to remain. We are close to the destruction of the caliphate. It will be completed very, very soon. This job is not for the faint of heart, but the good news, so to speak, is that Pompeo says he's rooted in the most important thing. The task that I have is informed by my understanding of my faith, uh, my belief in Jesus Christ as the Savior. It doesn't drive answers and outcomes every day. We all as Christians are searching. Uh, but uh, it does inform how I try to treat every human being with dignity and respect uh, in ways that uh, Christians ought to. I don't always live up to that standard, uh, but uh, it, it does inform the way I think about the world. Well, David Brody joins us now from Jerusalem. David, uh, Mike Pompeo is an amazing guy. What he had to say is remarkable. Oh, for sure. And as a matter of fact, we were a bit surprised, Chris Mitchell and I, that he actually named Congressman Omar uh, by name on foreign soil about anti-Semitism. That shows you how deep the political divide has become, Pat. And of course, the biblical comparison, Donald Trump and Queen Esther. And you can imagine any time you put Donald Trump and a biblical figure together, you know, the media is going to go haywire. And apparently they already have after our, our report. Uh, David, let me ask you, you know, the Democrats... Uh, have had uh, tremendous support among the Jewish community. I understand a number of the uh, announced candidates for the presidency are not going to go to the APEC uh, summit this week. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, you, first of all, you're right. I mean, there are plenty of those uh, Democrats running for president that won't make it. Uh, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders. Uh, you can go down the list. Elizabeth Warren, Beto O'Rourke. They're all not going to be there. And it's just fascinating to watch, Pat. I mean, you know the deal with AIPAC throughout the years. It was Democrats showing up, Republicans showing up, and it was really a nonpartisan pro-Israel uh, situation. But there is a major divide between what's going on in the Democrat Party today with that progressive, liberal, the AOC wing, as I like to call them. Uh, and you've got that. And then look who is speaking at AIPAC, Chuck Schumer, uh, Nancy Pelosi, the old guard of the Democrats, and that says everything you need to know about where the Democrat Party is heading. Uh, do you think the Jewish people are going to wake up and, and begin to shift their alliance from the Democrats to the Republicans? They've been a key funding source, I'm sure, for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. So here's the short answer, Pat. No, but with an asterisk. And that aster excuse me, that asterisk could be one, two, three percentage points or so in favor of a Donald Trump or Republicans. And that can make a huge difference in elections, especially if Donald Trump suffers in some sort of other area, whether it be with suburban women or with potentially even evangelicals. And so uh, that asterisk becomes crucial going into 2020. And I think that's important to watch. But why won't they uh, turn? Look, uh, 
there's a lot to unpack, and we can spend uh, many, many hours discussing this. But, you know, you have the Orthodox Jews that overall are very supportive of Donald Trump. But the American Jews, Reformed American Jews, look, I grew up as a Reformed American Jew, so I get it. I've lived there, and I know the deal. Uh, the philosophy is liberal. Uh, therefore, they fit with the Democrats. That's the way they want to go. Uh, and they'll say they're pro-Israel. But their philosophy from a liberal standpoint sides with the Democrats, and that is going to be very hard to undo. Well, David, thank you very much. Appreciate your analysis and uh, stay well. And we look forward to hearing another report from On the Road with, the, with the Mike Pompeo. Uh, David Brody, tremendous guy. Well, another news the president says that Fed policies hindered the economy last year. I'm not sure I agree with that, but anyhow, he said them. I think the Fed's been very reserved in its approach to money in this country so far. John Jessup has more of that story from Washington. Here's John. Thanks, Pat. President Trump is blaming the Federal Reserve for holding back economic growth in 2018, and he's said to be considering appointing one of his longtime supporters to the board. Bloomberg News reports the Heritage Foundation's Stephen Moore might be on the president's list. Moore is a Trump campaign advisor and a frequent guest here on the 700 Club. The president reported, reportedly telling Fox News that if the Fed hadn't increased interest rates, the economy would have grown more than 4 percent last year. Well, Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido says Nicolas Maduro wouldn't dare put him in jail. This after security forces detained Guaido's top aide, Roberto Marrero, in a raid on his home Thursday. Maduro's justice minister says Marrero is under arrest for supporting an insurrection. Guaido is in a political standoff with Maduro. Some 50 nations, including the United States, recognize him as Venezuela's legitimate leader. The country's legislature voted Guaido interim president after charges Maduro stole the recent election. And Pat, the Venezuelan crisis is on President Trump's agenda today with Caribbean leaders. Well, you know, I'm, I don't mean to sound like a war whore, but there comes a time when a group of thugs are terrorizing innocent civilians that it's going to take force to get those thugs out. And uh, sooner or later, the nations of uh, the OAS are going to have to realize they have a job to perform and they have to do it. But they apparently are very reluctant. And it seems like if, if you know, uh, John Bolton has said that uh, if there's a move on Guaido, we'll consider it very, very, uh, uh, I don't know, hostile or alarming. But uh, nevertheless, something has got to be uh, doing something about it. Now, we're going to turn to something here at home that is very alarming tragedy in the heartland of America. And John has more on that. That is right, Pat. Forecasters say 200 million Americans are at risk for flooding this spring. The eastern two-thirds of the country is especially at risk. The dire forecast comes as the upper Midwest faces deadly flooding this week. Heather Sells has a story. The National Weather Service says this spring could bring potentially historic and unprecedented flooding. Already, the upper Midwest is battling rising waters. On Thursday, the governor of Missouri declared a state of emergency, noting widespread flooding that is closing roads and threatening levees. In small towns like Craig, people are evacuating. Oh, I'm very grateful that they opened the church because I didn't know where I was going. The Missouri River crested its banks after heavy rains and snow melt earlier this month. The waters have killed three, damaged thousands of homes, and busted some 20 levees in Missouri, Nebraska, and Iowa. This is a very fragile situation as we talk about the ground being very saturated. We have two to 10 inches of liquid within the snowpack over the northern tier of states. So you melt that off, you have some more rain on top of that, you're going to see additional rises, and this is going to be a long process. The flooding is also a disaster for agriculture, wiping out tens of thousands of acres. In eastern Nebraska, the National Guard is dropping hay bales to stranded cattle. Operation Blessing is setting up in Fremont, Nebraska. The governor says that thousands have lost their homes. An Operation Blessing team is on the ground meeting with flood victims and assessing their homes to help with cleanup. Oftentimes they're very surprised that somebody would come from across the country to help them, a stranger helping a stranger. And uh, so we, we've seen a lot of emotions that are 
uh, coming out as a result of not just the initial disaster, but the fact that somebody is coming to help them. Out west, heavy winter rains and warm weather are causing early snow melt and runoff. Authorities are increasing the flow out of some dams to avoid flooding. Forecasters say the historic flooding could get worse as floodwaters in the upper Midwest head downstream. Uh, Heather Sells is joining us now from the CBN newsroom. Heather, I've, I've read reports that there are just massive amounts of snow that have fallen in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Uh, and uh, what have you learned about the flooding threats in California? Well, you know, we report a lot from California, Pat, and it's an incredible situation out there. They have received a record snowpack in the Sierras in February. We're talking about upwards of 500, 600 feet at uh, some ski resorts like Squaw Valley and Mammoth, uh, 50 feet of snow there. So that's a lot of water to manage. And the government right now is saying that California... California only has a minor uh, threat uh, for flooding, but water managers are definitely keeping an eye on this snowpack, watching how quickly it's going to melt. And in some cases, they are already increasing the flow out of these uh, dams, out of these reservoirs, uh, so that the water can empty out into the ocean and, and the communities won't be flooded. But they, they really aren't alarmed at, at, at the fact that this could be a, a massive flooding situation? The government is saying a minor flood threat, but uh, as as we were reporting just now, uh, they are already beginning to increase the flow out of these dams. So I think water managers know they've got to keep an extremely close eye on this situation. Well, Heather, thank you very much for that report. Appreciate it. Wendy. All right, lots going on in the news. Yeah. All right. Well, up next, at least two billion people worldwide drink contaminated water, causing 500,000 deaths every year. See how you have the power to save lives coming up. And later on, we'll take a look back at some of Pat's previous birthdays. Folks, happy birthday, dear <laughs> Pat. Goodbye, happy Five, birthday four, to three, you. <laughs> Stay with us as we celebrate Pat's 89th birthday on today's 700 Club. In case you just joined us, it's March 22nd, and it is Pat's birthday. We're going to be celebrating his amazing 89 years a little later on. March 22nd is also World Water Day, established back in 1993 to highlight the critical importance of fresh water and to motivate people to take action to help the water-stressed areas of the world. Here at CBN, we've been doing just that for decades, building wells through our clean water ministry. Here's Gordon Robertson to tell us more. It's something we often take for granted. We play in it, bathe in it, wash our clothes in our cars, and rarely think twice about it. It's as close as our kitchen sink, but for millions of people in the world, clean, drinkable water is something they can only dream about. There is a famine in the land. Water is life. Without it, we cannot do anything. According to the World Health Organization, at least two billion people use a contaminated water source for drinking. The water wasn't even clean. It had animal feces in it, but it was the only and best water source we had. Contaminated drinking water can carry diseases like cholera, dysentery, typhoid, polio, and diarrhea, and causes over 500,000 deaths each year. Women lose their babies. Old and young die from stomach infections. Their graves are everywhere. Sickness has plagued this village and my people because of that pond. The lack of accessible clean water takes a physical and economic toll on families suffering in poverty. We always had stomach aches, infections, and fever. I took my children to the doctor all the time. Sometimes I spend my entire salary on hospitals and medicines and didn't have anything left to buy food. CBN and our partners have been working for decades to change stories like these. In 1998, 
CBN partners help begin a clean water ministry that builds wells in water-stressed areas of the world. Our first well project was in India. Since then, CBN and our partners have built thousands of wells in more than a dozen countries, bringing life-changing water to tens of thousands of thirsty people. Water has come to a dry place. We have seen a miracle of God. We are so grateful to CBN for giving us the well. Thank you. Now we are so happy. When I look at my people, every face shines. God is so great. He has answered our prayers through the people of CBN. Thank you. May God bless you all. Today, on World Water Day, take a moment to thank God for the clean water He has given you and ask Him how He would have you share that gift with others. Well, now we have a special surprise. Pat, you share your birthday, March 22nd, with World Water Day. So in honor of your 89th, some of our partners decided they want to do something extra special. They're issuing an $89,000 challenge to our audience to help Operation Blessing bring clean water to thirsty people all over the world. They're calling it Pat's 89 Challenge, and they're asking everyone watching to say happy birthday to Pat by giving a special gift to help people who desperately need clean water. They will match all the gifts for clean water that come in until we reach $89,000. So, Pat, you founded Operation Blessing. Yes. You have lived your life helping poverty-stricken people all over the world. And I, we can't think of a better way to honor you on your birthday than to help people who have no clean water to drink. So right now, if you're watching and you would like to join in the fun of celebrating Pat, Pat's 89th birthday, please give us a call. The number on your screen, 800-700-7000 or visit ob.org slash 89 challenge and give a gift that can change a life today. It's a way of saying thank you, Pat, for all you've meant to, to me, to us. So call now, be a part of it. Again, the number on your screen, 1-800-700-7000 or visit ob.org slash 89 challenge. What do you think? I, I love it. It's a wonder. <laughs> I couldn't imagine a better birthday gift. If we can bring clean water to people. I, I remember I was in India, and uh, we, we uh, at Operation Blessing, uh, dug a well in this village. And uh, the people gathered around. Of course, usually we dug a well, and then they planted a church. And uh, the people were gathering around, and I saw where they got their water. And it was this fetid little pool. And it had like green slime on it. And that's where these beautiful people had to get their water. And I thought, my goodness, what a blessing that we could drill. And I think over the years, CBN, Operation Blessing, we've drilled at least 12,000 wells. I don't know if it's, if that's the right number. It may be more Maybe than that. Maybe more than that. Huh? More, I think it might be more than that. More yeah. than that now, but that, that's the number we used to work with. But it was about $1,000 a well, but it was an enormous a uh, blessing to the people in these impoverished countries. So thank you. If you want to participate, and I can't imagine any better way of, of saying happy birthday <laughs> than to think we can give clean water to a whole lot of people. And I appreciate those who put up that challenge because that means that every dollar you give will get doubled, and that's good. Okay. What a great gift. Because you know, it's hard to get you a gift because you pretty much have everything. Yeah, I, I don't. And I, you don't I, need I, anything. So I, this I is really anything. the best right. thing that we can get, Pat, are, yeah. are these clean water wells. Well, right. anyhow. Up next, we've got a well drigger. Uh, he's, he's uh, I think, was dr drilling oil wells, but he had extreme acid reflux. It's terrible. It was like eating me alive. I was really scared to, you know, die in my in my own vomit. Well, doctors couldn't help this man, but you'll see how he was healed in an instant when we come back.
Miguel Torres loves hot, spicy food. The hotter, the better. But for three years, he suffered from extreme acid reflux and could barely keep the blandest of foods down. The searing pain also kept him up at night. Miguel's condition got so bad, he was giving up on life completely. And then one day, he was healed in an instant. In the West Texas panhandle, where well water irrigates the arid land for crops, Miguel Torres operates a well digging rig from dawn to dust. It's a very physical job, but nothing ever stopped me. I didn't know what tired was. That was until everything he ate caused acid reflux. I couldn't hardly keep nothing down. It was just terrible. It was like eating me alive. I would take stuff out over the counter, and it wouldn't fix it. I mean, I was just very, very sick from my stomach. Burning pain wrecked his sleep, too. I was really scared to, you know, die in my, in my own vomit because that's how much stuff was coming out of me, you know? I would go to the doctor and I would fall asleep there. Even sitting in the waiting room, I, would, I was just knocked out. That's how tired I was. Increased dosages of prescription drugs failed to stop the acid reflux and searing pain. Miguel battled constant fatigue. I mean, I'd get out of work, go home, and I would go straight to my bed a lot of times. I mean, I was just tired and I couldn't sleep at night. Years of sleepless nights and agony with every meal ruined Miguel's health and broke his will to live. The doctors couldn't help me. I mean, I, I was getting worried because of the doctor telling me that it was, it, was try, it was getting to my esophagus and it was starting to eat it up, you know. And, you know, I only had one esophagus, so, you know, it, once it gets that, it's, it's over, you know, pretty much. And I was giving up on life completely, you know. That's how much pain I was in. To distract himself from the misery, Miguel often watched TV. So I lay there and I grabbed the remote control and I turned on the TV. Uh, I was feeling sad because I'm like the same thing every day, same thing every day. And I start flipping through the channels and it stops on the 700 Club. They said, we're going to pray. And somebody, this acid reflux stuff, right now, put your hand on the, your stomach and your area there. It made me like sit up and I turned it up. I, I, turned, I turned the volume up. In the name of Jesus, receive a miracle. Touch. Uh, I began to feel just like burning inside of me, like healing. Healing. Lord. Raise my hand, you know. Thank you for healing me, Lord. Thank you, gracias, Señor. Couldn't stop touching my stomach, you know, and uh, that prayer was for me. And I've been healed ever since. Here I am. I can eat anything. I won't need to take acid medicine anymore. He healed me from everything. I share that with everybody. I mean, I can't stop talking about it. I think there was more than one healing, really. But I just love the feeling, you know, I love the, the energy and the, all that it gave me. I'm ready to go to work, you know. I feel young again, you know, I feel great again, you know. But I want to thank Pat because God used Pat through his prayer and his words and his belief in him that, you know, God still heals. And here I am just so joyful and thankful. God still heals. We are so glad you're able to eat whatever you want now, Miguel, and so grateful, Pat, yeah. that you have that word of knowledge. Yeah, and you know, I didn't know Miguel, but you know, can think his life is transformed because of God. God is a loving God. God is a good God. He loves you. He loves you. And he's all powerful. Now, here's, a, here's something else that we've got in. I think this is kind of exciting, too. Well, Wendy, uh, there's a lady named Gloria. She lives in, in York, New York. Not York, Pennsylvania, York, New York. She had surgery on her right tie. had a uh, right toe. She had two screws to keep the joining toe straight. Suddenly she started hurting like crazy. It was stabbing pain. You prayed on this program. You said, God is touching your right foot. You've had surgery. It's a piece of metal in there. It's been hurting. God's healing you. And the Lord brought the swelling down, and the stabbing pain was gone. And Gloria in York, New York, is praising God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here's one, Pat. Yes, sir. Sandra of Henderson, Nevada, was diagnosed with cancer, and her doctor was unsure if treatments would even work. However, she went ahead and started treatments. Then one day, Sandra heard you give a word of knowledge, Pat, uh, a healing for someone with cancer. Shortly afterwards, Sandra's doctor found she was healed and said it was a miracle. Praise the Lord. Listen, 
There's nothing too hard for God. Isn't that wonderful? There's nothing too hard for Him. He made you. He created you. He can sure fix you. I mean, why do we think a, a healing is a big deal? For God, it's nothing. All He's got to do is speak the Word. The whole universe comes into being. So anyhow, Wendy and I are going to pray for you right now. Let's believe God. Thank you, Lord. Father, I join hands with my dear sister in Christ, and we agree together. Yes. Somebody has had a balloon stent put in your, in your aorta, and that has gone bad on you, and God is healing that, and that, that aorta is going to be completely healed, and you are whole in the name of Jesus. Wendy, what do you have? Someone with a rash all over your body, you don't know what it is, um, or if it's an allergy, but God is touching you and you are being delivered from that right now in Jesus' name. Speaking of rash, somebody's got a rash all over your body. It's really bad and you've been itching and crying out to God. It's been driving you crazy. And God says, I love you and I'm healing your body from the top of your head to the sole of your foot. You are totally healed. Wendy. And there's someone with a just a... You've just had chronic problems with your lungs, with your, uh, just respiratory issues, and um, God is going to deliver you from that. You are not going to have those problems anymore. Just start praising the Lord. Thank you. Thank you and for wherever you are in this audience, any place in the world, just receive the Lord. Just raise your hand and worship Him and, and ask Him. Hitherto you've asked nothing in my name, Jesus said. Ask and you shall receive that your joy will be full. Ask and you shall receive. May the anointing power of the Holy Spirit come upon you right now. Receive an answer to your prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> wow. All right, give us a call. If the Lord has touched you, call. Or when the Lord, I shouldn't say if, when the Lord has touched you, call in one 800 700 thousand. Wendy. All right. We'll still have a special birthday round of your questions, honest answers. Kim says, happy birthday, Pat. My question is, how long have you and Mrs. Dee Dee Robertson been married? Stay tuned for Pat's answer and much more coming up. Plus, from our CBN archives, we bring you happy birthdays to Pat from throughout the years. Texas style. I remember that when our yeah. celebration of Pat's 89th birthday continues after this. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Special Counsel Robert Mueller is expected to present the findings of his nearly two-year Russia investigation soon. It focused on election uh, meddling, possible obstruction of justice by President Trump, and possible collusion with Trump campaign officials. Although President Trump called the investigation ridiculous and a witch hunt, he says it should be made public. Reports indicate no more indictments are to be announced. Well, Operation Blessing is bringing clean water to children in Guatemala. The kids were assigned to retrieve water from a well 50 meters from their school. The buckets were extremely heavy for the small children, and the water was not clean. Operation Blessing, with the local community's help, constructed a pipeline connecting the well to an elevated water tank and a hand-washing station at the school. Now the children have clean water closer to where they spend their days. You can find out more about Operation Blessing by going to its website at ob.org. Wendy and the birthday boy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Welcome back to the 700 Club. If you're just joining us, it's March 22nd, and we are celebrating Pat's 89th birthday today. It's also World Water Day. And in honor of Pat, some of our partners have issued a challenge. They will match all the gifts that you send in today for clean water until we reach $89,000. So happy birthday to Pat with your gift. Just give us a call, 1-800-700-7000, or you can visit ob.org slash 89challenge and give a gift that can change a life today. And it will be, I'm sure, the best 
best yeah, present that you could ask for? Well, that you could that, that, that'll uh, if it's matched will drill at least 200 wells, and uh, that in turn each well can hit as many as 10,000 people. So the multiplication of that's going to be enormous. What a wonderful yes. birthday gift! All right, questions. Yes, we're going to go right into email. Kim says, "Happy birthday, Pat." God has blessed our world with the ministries of the 700 Club. May your celebration of your birthday bring many more blessings to you and your family and friends. My question is, how long have you and Mrs. Dee Dee Robertson been married? Well, you're going to see her in a few minutes, but 64 wonderful years, and she's put up with me, and I put up with her. <laughs> we, I've learned one thing. How do you have a long, happy marriage? You look at your wife, and you say, what will make you happy, dear? That's all you've got to remember. Remember that phrase, and you got it made. All right, yes, dear. That's the phrase to remember, right? Whatever makes you happy, dear. All right. All right. Samson says, what is the one thing you want to see happen on the earth before the Lord takes you home to glory? Well, he said the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I think we're seeing a move of God, but we haven't seen the, the anointing. And I, I think there's going to be a tremendous spiritual revival. And it's coming. I mean, at CBN, we've seen, I, it's astounding, but it's up to 600 million people have accepted Jesus. 600 million. And uh, so, I, I think there will be a move of the Holy Spirit throughout the world, and we are in the middle of it right now. You say, what do I want to see? That's what I want to see. All right. Amen. Nothing better. All right. Chris says, happy birthday, Pat. I'm about to turn 60. I've learned life lessons along the way, and my, my walk with the Lord is stronger now than ever. What reflections on life can you offer from age 59 to 89? You know, when I, I got to be 50, I thought, man, I've, 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 I've hit the mountain and it's downhill all the way. <laughs> when I hit 80, I had another challenge to take charge of a university, and God gave me an anointing of the Holy Spirit. I had just suddenly, I, I was renewed. I was like a new person. Mm -hmm. And I think God can do that. I mean, you know, at, at 80, uh, you think of uh, uh, Caleb, and he came and he said, look, when I was uh, uh, 40, you gave, made a promise to me, 40. Now I'm 85, and I'm as strong to go in and come out as I was when I was that age. Now give me that mountain. And I, I think it's amazing what God will do. I mean, He is all-powerful, and He can renew your strength like an eagle. And He, he did it with me. I'm, I'm just astounded. I was going to give up this program. I thought I was too old for it. I wanted to resign from the university. I was too old for that. And then all of a sudden, pew, bang. I love it. And we're so grateful. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, all right. Dory says, happy birthday, Pat. What is one of your fondest 700 Club memories? Oh, it's too hard to say. You know, we had a telethon. That's, that's where the 700 Club came from. I was asking for 700 people to give $10 a month to keep this program on the air. Uh, at, uh, that's all we needed. That was 10 bucks a month from 700 people, 7,000 long. Okay. <laughs> well, when we, some of the people began praying, I, I had some of these little Baptist ladies on the telephone. But they'd never prayed for a miracle in their lives. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit moved in, and it, it was, the whole city was gripped. We had been praying for revival in Tidewater for seven years, and, and this was the beginning of the seventh. And we had miracles. Uh, I remember one uh, person, this kid had a, a facial uh, problem. He had a, a, one of those uh, liver spots, and he just his face was all a mess. And as we were praying, it was like an invisible hand went across his face and completely healed, healed it up. Wow. I mean, it was, it was marvelous. He asked me what the best one was. We've had so many memories, but that was a good one. Mm, I love it. All right. Uh, here's one. Pat, you're, you're my encouragement and my inspiration. How have you kept the faith up to this age? Uh, realizing I'm not a very big deal, and it all depends on God, and I, I trust Him, and I, I commit myself to Him. And I've asked over and over again, I said, make me part of your plan. You know, I, don't, don't let me find my way. I want your way. And so I think that's, that's the answer. I mean, you know, and, you know, here's the deal. There's no sweat in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get in the flesh, everything is cool because you're letting God do it. As long as soon as you get in the flesh, you're in trouble. 
you have to start striving. I'm going to do it my way. And that was the problem. You remember with uh, those two sons of Adam, you know, one was doing it God's way. The other one was doing it his way. And, and as long as you're doing it his way, it's easy. All right. Surrender, I think is the word, right? Well, that's, that's it. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Kelly says, how many times a day do you pray, Pat? You are very encouraging and God bless you. Well, I, I pray all the time. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I'm getting dressed. What kind of tie should I put on? I mean, seriously, <laughs> you know, what, what kind of clothes should I wear? What am I going to say? I've got to go on the air. What, what are the features I want to talk about? And during the day, what else have I got to do? And you're talking to God all the time. You know, you pray without ceasing is what the Bible says. All right. All right. Here was uh, Adam says, how long has it been since you accepted Jesus into your life and began to serve him? And by the way, happy birthday. Well, I found the Lord when I was in my mid-20s, I think. And so you can subtract, say, 23 from... And you were already married. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you and your wife kind of came at the same time. Already married, and I found the Lord, and, and then she came along. But uh, you, you can subtract that from 89 and get the number, <laughs> whatever it is. All right. But that really changed everything, didn't it? Uh, that changed everything. Oh, I, oh, I was born again. I was totally changed, transformed. And I, I met with a guy to get some advice. I, I wanted to find out. And he said, uh, tell me your testimony. And I said, well, uh, I believe, uh, you know, I've been doing this and I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lenny Mohammedan could have told me what you just did. Isn't there something more? And I said, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ died for the sins of, my, of the world and for my sin too. When I said that, I heard a voice in my ear. It was quoting something from Romans. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you're going to be saved. Wow. And I knew that that confession, I had made the confession that changed my life. Wow. Thanks, okay. Pat. All right. Colleen says, thank you for a life lived in service and love. You're an amazing blessing to so many. How do you keep your focus on God? Um, well, you know, something I learned a long, long time ago is what they call a quiet time. And you have to have time in the morning uh, to pray and seek the Lord and just be quiet. And I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. If you don't do it, you're, I mean, a, a day without prayer and, and, and you're dead. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, really, you're dead. You've got to have time, if not just a few minutes, you know, to, to just, yeah. Lord, tell me something. Okay. Right. Man, that's so good. Thank you, Pat. Well, up next, celebrating Pat's 89th birthday with a look back. I hope you live to be a hundred. I hope you live to be a hundred. I hope you live to be a hundred and maybe a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Awesome. Stay tuned as we party on coming up. for you. Texas style, I mean, <laughs> It sure was. <laughs> this is a monumental cake. You want to try to cut a piece? It's you start right here. <laughs> and I am moving into 84 years. Yay! Wow. Wow. Hey. Are you ready to go to Hunter, sweetie? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we just wish you a a happy, wonderful, health-filled day and year. All, all the above, and I have my trophy wife. I got this, <laughs> this, this little girl. And she is. <laughs> I can't believe it. I used to think 24 was old. <laughs> I, 
did. <laughs> well, I've had my 39th you, birthday several times myself, so. <laughs> but 87, I'm getting older than Moses almost. I mean, you know, you wonder. That is my new truck. Yeah, woo! Wow. I, have, I have a Chevy Silverado. I'm still young at heart. Well, <laughs> we're, we're, can we just say, we know you gave up the horse for the truck, but we rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you live to be a hundred. I hope you live to be a hundred. I hope you live to be a hundred and maybe a little bit more. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> well, what a well, happy birthday, Todd! What a wonderful celebration. Thanks, Wendy. And thanks, everybody. This has been tremendous. I appreciate it so much. As I told Wendy at the beginning, you know, I, I went to sleep an old guy, I mean, a young guy, and I woke up <laughs> older than Moses. I just don't understand what's happening. But my dear wife's here with me. Uh, I asked you before, are you ready to go to 102? No. <laughs> 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 You've got to stay with me, dear. <laughs> my, my trophy wife of many, many years. I'm so glad you're here. God bless all of you. Uh, we have a marvelous group of people, our friends and staff that are here surrounding me. They make this uh, all possible, and they work so hard and so faithfully, and I really love every one of them. And so I thank you all for being here. Give yourselves a hand. I just really appreciate you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yes. I want to remind um, our viewers and rem that today is not only Pat's 89th birthday, it's also World Water Day. Yeah. We have a challenge of $89,000 from some of our partners in honor of Pat. And you can join in the fun. Just call 1-800-700-7000 or visit ob.org slash 89 challenge and give a gift that can change a life. Amen. Clean drinking water. What a great gift. We have a cake here with a, all that water stuff on top of it. I don't, <laughs> can, 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 I, can somebody cut that and serve you? Oh, we're going to cut it. Well, please, can you cut it? We're going to cut all it right, right now. We'll, we'll but in. we don't want to cut the... All right, let, let's do that. We don't want to cut the well. Okay, please. so... Pick the well out of the cake. Okay, we'll start right here. All right. Well, all thank right. you all. God bless all of you. Have a great weekend, and God bless you. And thank you for this wonderful birthday celebration. Bye-bye.